one of Chester Zoo's most feared inhabitants, is about to come face to face with the head keeper of reptiles, his older McGeorge. She is a dangerous animal. Um, she's a, around 22 feet in length and she weighs 56 kilos. So it, you don't really want to tangle too much with her. But tangling with this reticulated python is exactly what his older is about to do. The recently arrived snake is seriously ill. She needs urgent treatment, and going inside the enclosure is the only option for his older and head vet, Stephanie Sanderson. She's been quite sick. She's very thin, um, and she's also had problems with gurgly breathing, so we think she's had a pneumonia. Right, are you ready? I'm OK, if you're OK. Injecting a python is like injecting any other snake, apart from the fact that she's so much bigger and uh, she could potentially do us quite a lot of damage. You know, breaking a human's leg is quite within their repertoire and we have to be very careful. Don't do anything yet. Come and grab this tail. Just hold it. OK. If the python wraps itself around them, the crushing power would be enough to kill. You hold that tail. Isolde uses a broom to hold the snake down and Stephanie quickly gives the injection. She's all done. Right, Karen, are you out? Okay. Good. She's been on antibiotics for six weeks. Um, that seems to have done the trick. She's getting over it very, very well now. She stopped wheezing. Uh, we have been fogging the unit to help her with her chest in case she's, it's, it's gone deeper. And that seems to be helping her because I haven't heard her gargling for a while. Yeah. So I think that's uh, going really well. Keep our fingers crossed. Keep our fingers crossed, yes, that everything goes See well. The sounds of Zulu tribes, the sounds of Africa. Africa used to be home to the Eastern Bongo but today they're thought to be almost extinct in the wild. <laughs> Chester has a small herd cared for by head keeper Alan Woodward. Today, he's checking up on Nibbles, a four-year-old female who's pregnant. There's a bit of a race every morning now to, to check Nibbles to see if she's had a calf or not. Hello, Nibbles. You're still looking quite big, aren't you? You're a good girl. You definitely build a rapport up with the animals, and you do worry about them quite a bit. She's looking fine. I mean, she. this is her second calf at Chester now, and um, she looks exactly like she looked the, the last time she had a calf. Um, she's very relaxed, um, very chilled. Um, I'm sure everything will be OK. Most of the time, it's all up to her. It's a tense time for Nibbles' carers. Jesse and Dan are students. They've spent their summer at the zoo and have helped to look after Nibbles throughout her pregnancy. Soon, they'll return to university. I had my fingers crossed that she might um, give birth today. Um, and she was showing all the signs yesterday. I thought it might be a nice leaving present. I think probably within my time, I know she's been sort of like hanging on uh, for the past week or so, but I think it'll probably be within the next week when she comes. So hopefully I'm going to be around to see that. It's a fantastic experience and an opportunity really to work with some um, species as endangered as a bongo. It's cool. The animals are amazing. I'm going to miss the place a lot. It's been a lifetime experience working here. Come on. Good boy. In the paddock next door, Alan is catching up with Narok, the ten-year-old male who played a key part in Nibble's pregnancy. Well, at Chester Zoo, he's sired about five babies now. As soon as he gets a bit stroppy with the females, I mean, he'll... When he goes in with them, first of all, he gets a bit carried away and sort of chases them all around the enclosure. But once he's used to that and he's over the initial excitement of going in there, he's fine. They just all settle down together. And he is quite placid, but uh, we don't take any risks with him, just in case. He's a good boy today. Aren't you? You're a good boy. They're all individuals, and Bongo are quite different from other antelope. They're not very scatty. I mean, they're quite steady animals. And, um, and they're very special animals, because in the wild, they're nearly extinct. 
The last bongo was seen on Mount Kenya about 10 years ago, and there hasn't been one seen since then. Nibble's pregnancy could help her species to survive, and it won't be long before the baby bongo is born. Is today going to be the day or tomorrow? You're keeping us on tenterhooks, Nibbles. You are, aren't you? You're a good girl. At the giraffe house, headkeeper Tim Rowlands is checking up on some of his favourite animals. Tim has worked with the Chester giraffes for 23 years and has a special understanding of these gentle giants. Come on, sweetheart. Push on. Push on. It takes a long time to be in tune with animals when you have to work so closely. And a mistake, get trodden on. They have fairly long legs and, uh, and they kick fairly hard as well. So, But they're not that sort of animal. They're not looking for trouble. They want to they wanna eat, they want to drink, they want to get out in the sun. Looking up to the rest of the giraffes is a young male called Rafters. He was born at Chester two years ago, and Tim was there at the birth. The little man here, who's always going to be my baby, no matter how tall he is. Um, his mum wasn't very good at uh, looking after them. She didn't like young giraffes. So when he was born, she would clean him up, but the moment he moved, she would kick him around, and a giraffe kick is a serious thing. And she wasn't just knocking him to get him up. She didn't like him. So um, we had to take him away from mum and bottle, rear him. I gave him his milk, and he sees me as somebody who will give him nice things. But that was the whole point of trying to keep him in the group, that he stays as one of the social group, but also sees me as one of the group. There is that soft spot for the rafters. One day, rafters will grow up to be as big as Thorn. He's the dominant male of the group. At the age of five, he's not the Stand oldest giraffe at Chester, but he is the tallest and the heaviest. He weighs 1148k. That's well over a ton. Given their huge size, it's not surprising that giraffes have insatiable appetites. Each adult can chew its way through 140 pounds of foliage every day. Keeping their stomachs full is a non-stop job for senior keeper Belinda Porter. What we've done is, is we've tied a lot of branches together. We winch it to the top and this way the giraffes have to pull the leaves off and tuck them off and reach up as they would do in the wild. Normally what we'd feed them is a concentrate pellet, but obviously the different vitamins and the tannin levels which they get out of the browse in the wild, shit is quite essential, they get it in captivity as well. Uh, Willow is one of their favourites, but we do feed them a variety of browse, hawthorn and lots of other spiky trees, because actually in the wild they would eat acacia, which is a very thorny browse. They've got really strong uh, tongues, uh, quite long tongues, uh, very prehensile. They can get in and around the smallest of places to reach in and pull the, pluck the leaves and pluck the bark out. They absolutely love it. Hi, One of the best part of the jobs is to be able to come along with a big bunch of brows and have all the giraffes come sort of running after you, really enthusiastic to see you. So yeah, it's a really good, good part of the job, really satisfying. <laughs> I was getting whipped in the back of the head by a branch. <laughs> At Chester Zoo, keeper Andy Wolfenden is preparing to tackle some unlikely opponents, the otters. He's cleaning out their enclosure. It's a job he doesn't look forward to. We all joke that we've drawn the short straw when we have to do the otter pull because of the pressure that you get from the officers. They may look sweet and innocent, but Andy knows that appearances can be deceptive. They don't like intruders, and Andy is invading their space. They're incredibly inquisitive. Um, sorry, I'm going to start biting me now. <laughs> <laughs> this is so naughty. They'd love to know what people are up to. 
whether it be us cleaning in here or strimming or mowing the paddock. Um, they always come up to see what's going on. If you leave anything lying around, they always try and get involved as well. You know, any brushes, shovels, they're always there inspecting it, smelling it, touching it to see what they can do with it next. <laughs> Most of the times when, uh, when we get to this stage and we're leaning over, they tend to come and sneak up behind you and you're most vulnerable. <laughs> Here they come. Go on. As you can see, you've got a vibe in the back of your head. <laughs> Constantly sneaking up and trying to surround you. Cleaning the otter's pool might not be glamorous, but it's an essential part of Andy's job. You don't try and do it as much as we can, really. Um, with them playing in the mud and stuff and then going for a swim, they tend to muddy the water up quite quickly. Obviously, they prefer to swim around in somewhere nice and clean. They also tend to wash the food in there as well. It's worse when you're actually emptying the pools and they tend to swim and yeah, obviously with the, the pools being quite dirty when we clean them out, you can't see where they are. So you tend to feel something brush against your hand uh, or brush against your arm and you know it's time to pull your arm out. See some of uh, some of the mussel shells. Um, we try to feed them uh, quite a, vi a variety of uh, different things. So mussels in shells is fantastic for them. Asian short clawed otters have got very little webbing on their front feet. And what they'll do is they'll get their fingers in between the gaps in the mussel shells. They'll crack them open and then scoot the meat out. They tend to pull things off. Uh, this is just the intake that runs the waterfall. Uh, but we have to keep it locked because uh, the otters to try and open it <laughs> to get in there. It's a good job it's not smell of vision. It's bits like this that people don't see, you know, when you're ankle deep in otter poo and fending off eight angry females, you know, it's uh, wondering where you're going to get bitten next and, you know, when you go home at the end of the evening and you're digging out scales from under your fingernails or trying to wash bloodworm out of your hair. Now, it is a lovely job, but you know, it's a bit of an eye-opener when you actually become a keeper. Come on. At the giraffe house, head keeper Tim Rowlands is spending time with Rafters, the young male that was rejected by his mother. Come on. Rafters was hand-reared by Come Tim, on. and the two have a special bond but Rafters is sick. He needs some medication. He's been pretty poorly for the uh, last four months and we're giving him some steroids. OK, then, little man. Come on, then. And we found the best way to give him the steroids because he wouldn't take it in a banana, he wouldn't take it in his concentrate, um, is that we've started him on a bottle again. It's a serious problem. He has a serious skin allergy. He's allergic to something and his skin is showing the effects of that. That we're trying at the moment. We're also taking down the amounts that he's being taken, so we're actually weeding him off it. So he's only on a small percentage of what he was on to start with. And if, if all's going well with that, then we have our fingers crossed that he'll be okay. At his age, rafters should be full of youthful energy, but he's not. Instead, he's struggling to cope with a rare condition that's affecting his behaviour and his daily interaction with the rest of the group. Rafters is an adolescent male, so when I open the door, he should be the first one out, legs kicking, full of the joys of spring, and he's not. He's just tentative of walking out. Come on, you. Rafters' illness affects the whole of his body, even down to his feet. The area where the skin meets his hooves is weak, making it painful for him to walk. Well, we think he's got pressure in his feet, um, which is stopping his movement as much, so he's not walking as much, he's not running as much, and if he's pushed too fast, then he will stumble a little bit as if it's uncomfortable. That's his condition. Um, the medication is working to a point, but we haven't got there yet. Yeah, it's hard. Come on. The next few weeks will be critical for rafters. Tim will do what he can to make the giraffe comfortable and is in contact with experts throughout the world in the hope of finding a cure. 
you put so much time and effort into these animals. I mean, we were coming in every night bottle feeding. Um, you wait for them to be born for 14 months, and then it's fairly fraught, especially with his mum. And then you take 12 months rearing him up, and then another six months to get him used to being a giraffe and taking solids. And then you move him on, say goodbye. Start again with the next one. Hey, hey. Hey, hey, that's enough. At the bongo enclosure, the long wait for Nibbles to give birth is finally over. Good girl, Nibbles. You've got visitors. Head keeper Alan oh, Woodward is girl. checking on the new arrival. Here we go. A young male called Tumbo. When he was born, he was having difficulty standing up. We solved that problem within a couple of minutes, and then we just wanted to give the mother and the calf a couple of days' peace and quiet together to, to bond properly, and now everything's fine. There's no problems now. Come on, Nibbles. Nibbles is called outside so Alan can check on her baby. He'll have to work quickly so mother and calf aren't separated for too long. Zoo vet oh, Stephanie family. Sanderson and keeper Andy Wolfenden arrived to help. The plan is it's, it's your show, you're going to do your thing, and I'm merely your technical assistant. Should we microchip him first and do his ear after that? Microchip him, do his ear, and I can have a quick listen to his heart sure. as well. Yeah, Just, yeah give him a general... I mean, it was all fine last time, but... Yeah, yeah give him a general check over. Okay. Yeah. Alan needs to register Tumbo as part of an international breeding programme. He'll be given a microchip and an ear tag. The procedures don't hurt, but he's jumpy because it's the first time he's been handled. Okay, I used to do it just where your hand is. Okay. So what we do is we feel for the bone at the front of the shoulder and we go just in front of the bone. There we go. That's okay. Okay, baby. Okay. There you go. That was quick. He goes beep. I just need to do it where your hand is. And he goes beep with the same number, so. He's now got that number for life. That's great. It's the reason quick. for doing it into the shoulder rather than just under the skin mm -hmm. is as he grows, finding where it's got to is going to be almost right. impossible. Sure. The vets are very sort of uh, hands-on uh, at Chester Zoo and they try to explain a lot of things to, to the keeping staff as well. So eventually some of the keeping staff can actually do um, some of the work that, that they can do, I mean, like ear tagging and monitoring sort of like the heart. Make sure there's no veins there. Should be fine there, shouldn't I? I've done this quite a few times, but I'm not very keen on the crunchy noise. CH14. Next, Stephanie checks Tumbo's heart. He does have a little bit of a heart murmur. Mm -hmm. That's quite normal in newborn animals. I don't know if you want to have a quick listen, so you can mind, hear what please. it sounds like. Let me just find yeah. it for you. OK. Normally, the heart goes lub-dub, and his goes lub-shdub, lub-shdub. <laughs> It's quite pronounced, isn't that? Mm. Mm. It's, you can hear the heartbeat, but you get like a shh in between, can't you really? Stephanie is confident the heart murmur is nothing to worry about. I haven't heard anything. <laughs> it should clear up in a couple of weeks' time, and she'll keep a close eye on the calf just to be sure. It looks really well, I mean, everything else, doesn't it, really? Yeah. So then we'll all go out now and then let Mum back in. we will be missing his mum now. Every birth is, is like an achievement to the section. Um, it's uh, something we all look forward to. And obviously, once it's all over and done with, everything's OK. So it's a huge relief to, to all of us, mm. isn't it, really? He's actually going outside today, which is another, another stage in his life, really, which is, again, is another, another special sort of day for us. There he is. Well, that's the first time the baby's been outside. As Tumbo explores his new surroundings, his mother is never far away. He quickly finds his feet and slowly starts to absorb the sounds, sights and smells of his new home. In the wilds of Kenya, baby bongos would be at risk from predators like lions and feral dogs. But here in Chester, Tumbo is safe to enjoy his first taste of the outdoor life with the rest of his family. It's a lovely day for him to come out as well, really. It's 
big sister looking after him as well. Yeah. It's so nice to see last year's calf with this year's calf as well. That's it. Didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't like the outside world. <laughs> it's scary. Next time, the elephants line up for a pedicure. A new heavyweight arrives at the reptile house. And Britain's rain-soaked summer threatens to wipe out an entire generation of flamingos.